Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our session, and thank you for joining. In this session, we'll be covering iTrack 365 technical enhancements in 2020. Um, first, though, the introductions. Uh, my name is Tien Specht. I'm a senior full stack software developer. I have 20 years of experience in the software development industry. And I have full stack development experience across a wide variety of languages, frameworks, and platforms. And I've been with uh, iTrack for almost a year now. And Malik, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Malik Borhant, and I am the manager of product development and innovation. I've been working in the development capacity for the last 25 years. With the last 15 years, I've focused on Microsoft Dynamics. And I've been with iTrack for about 10 years. Great, thank you, Malik. Um, now for the agenda for this session. Um, this session will cover a high-level overview of new iTrack 365 technical enhancements. Um, In-depth details on many of these enhancements will be available in upcoming sessions, so uh, make sure to check those other sessions out if you're interested to get more information. Some of the features that we'll be covering today are uh, modern authentication. That includes OAuth 2, multi-factor authentication, and single sign-on. A few of the other features we'll be covering are iTrack external user forms, um, the new activities area in the iTrack portal, Microsoft Teams authentication with iTrack, uh, a few other miscellaneous iTrack enhancements, the new mobile app, and the iTrack API. Um, first of all, I'll cover a little bit more details on OAuth 2 authentication. Um, first of all, uh, what is OAuth 2? Um, OAuth 2 is basically an industry standard authorization framework and it's now available in iTrack and it's supported for versions uh, 4.15 and above. And why is this important? Um, basically, instead of legacy authentication where the app is in the middle of the authentication flow, um, the user now authentic authenticates directly with the account provider. And this means that rather than passing around a username and password or a session, that access tokens are used instead. Um, this results in a much more secure authentication process than the previous authentication method. Um, a little bit more on OAuth 2 authentication is it basically enables the applications to delegate user authentication to the service that hosts the user account. Um, iTrack authenticates uh, currently against accounts that are hosted on the Azure Active Directory or Azure AD service. Um, basically, as you can see in the screenshot here, um, rather than authenticating through the iTrack app, you're actually redirected directly to Microsoft, and this is where all of the authentication uh, takes place. Um, after the authentication process is complete, you're redirected back to iTrack and you're automatically logged in. Um, we've implemented um, the OAuth 2 authorization code flow. Um, this is the most secure uh, flow as part of OAuth 2 because access tokens uh, flow between the web server and the authentication provider, and they don't actually go to the web browser, so there's less of a chance of anything to be compromised with those access tokens. Um, the new authentication uh, method also allows longer-lived iTrack sessions, currently uh, set to four days um, without compromising security. And we've also implemented the new authentication in such a way that if your session expires in the middle of entering a large form, you can re-authenticate in a new window without losing any of your form data. Um, next, I'll cover a few of the, de the details on multi-factor authentication. Uh, multi-factor authentication provides additional security by requiring a secondary form of authentication when you're logging into an account. Um, this basically prevents anyone from being able to access your account, even if they somehow manage to obtain your password. So it's, it's really a, a big boost in security for all accounts in your organization. And multi-factor authentication, or MFA, is enabled by default um, with all new Azure AD configurations. So Microsoft is really big on getting this enabled, um, again, because of the much better security that's um, available because of it. And um, this uh, multi-factor authentication is available for iTrack versions 4.15 or higher as well. Um, there are a couple different forms, uh, common forms of multi-factor authentication that are available with Azure AD. 
Um, the first one is the Microsoft Authenticator app. This is the one that's re really recommended by Microsoft. Um, with this app, you have the option of either getting a pop-up on your phone to approve a login or to get a verification code from the app that you can then enter into your, your login process. Um, there are also two other ways um, that you can uh, use multi-factor authentication, which are um, through SMS messages or uh, voice calls. And both of these would provide you with a verification code that you would then enter during the login process. And that would be after you're entering your password. Um, this screenshot here shows an example of a MFA prompt um, with the Authenticator app. Basically what will happen is your web browser will sit and wait here until you approve the login in the app on your phone. And then as soon as it's approved, the web browser will automatically redirect and you know, log you into iTrack. Um, the next feature um, related to the new authentication is single sign-on. Um, this basically enables a user to um, log in once and access multiple company resources, applications, and web applications. Um, this really increases security and convenience because users only need to remember a single password and they don't need to sign in as often. Um, with this feature, if you're already logged into Dynamics 365 and you open iTrack, you'll just be automatically logged in. So it really saves you from having to log in multiple times to both Dynamics and the iTrack portal. Um, this feature also allows iTrack portal pages to be embedded in the micro into Microsoft Teams without requiring an additional login. And we'll have an example of this coming up in the next few slides. Uh, the next iTrack enhancement that I'd like to talk about is iTrack external user forms. Um, this feature basically gives you the ability to interact with iTrack forms without requiring a login. You can use this feature to embed external user forms into your website or Dynamics portals or PowerOps portals or you know, basically any other way that you want to embed it into your existing systems. Um, it allows you to connect data from your or collect data from your contractors, your vendors, and other third-party users. Uh, you can also use your own customized colors, your own logo, and branding to match with your website. And there's also the ability to pass in parameters if you want to populate if you populate data or certain fields in the form. The next feature I'll be covering is the new activities area for the iTrack portal. Um, as you can see in this screenshot, we've actually renamed the original activities area to dashboard. And this new activities errors, or area is specifically focused on activities and tasks. So it lets you basically see all of your activities and tasks in one central location. So it's easy to follow up on you know, things that you need to get done. Um, this area will also let you display your custom system views. You can choose which columns to display. Um, it will let you use your own default filters so you can restrict which records will appear in the list. And it, you can also define how the list should be sorted. Um, so that's pretty much for it for my part of the presentation. I'll hand it off to Malik now, who will cover a few more of the iTrack enhancements. Hi, just a recap of the Teams integration. There's a session that will show it um, live after this one. Um, so with Teams, you, we, we added the ability to add custom Teams tabs to display your iTrack forms and your corrective actions or form tasks. Um, iTrack records, when you open them up from Teams, still use the same UI your users use today. Um, you can use our new Teams app to display Teams cards that have a link and some information. Uh, there's a screenshot here on the bottom left. Um, and now managers can com complete approvals directly from Teams as well. Um, and you can post uh, team, I track notifications to Teams um, rather than sending emails when a new form is submitted or the status changes. Um, also coming uh, later this year, uh, probably by the end of the summer, will be that you'll have the ability to add really any of the iTrack areas from the iTrack portal into Teams. And you'll be able to pick and choose, reorder them, um, mix them in with other components as well. Um, some other enhancements we have are um, with the unified client interface, the new UCI interface. So we have um, additional model-driven apps. Um, we've added Spanish translations and updated our French translations for both the portal and for mobile. Um, 
we've also added the ability to rename save and save and close. So you can call them something else that makes sense for, for that particular form or for your users. Um, we've expanded the procedure and competency module. Uh, there's a session tomorrow that will go in detail in that in, in procedures and competency. We've enhanced our spills control, so there's a lot more options and fields you can add to the control. We've enhanced, also enhanced our injury control. Um, we've added additional options and sorting for user-defined item lists. Um, and we've added additional ability for um, show and hide based on categories. And as Tian has shown you, we've improved the activities page. Um, and we've added enhancements to some of the built-in reporting as well. And we've added some um, busy indicators for some of the longer running processes. <clears throat> And we've improved the save and load times and much, much more. Um, to get a detailed list by version, you can either contact support or go to our uh, support website. So uh, for our roadmap, current, the current release right now is 4.15. Um, 4.16 will be coming out in a couple of weeks. And 4.16 will include um, some of the initial the team's integration, and we'll include um, phase one and the beta version of the training app. Um, and then phase two will come later at the end of the summer, which include the rest of the team's integration. Then by the end of the year, we'll have um, the additional forms app and the mobile connector management portal. So today, the mobile portal management portal is kind of a black box for everyone. But by the end of the year, we hope to uh, give access to the end user uh, to uh, admins at the uh, uh, customer admins. Uh, there'll be a session on our new trading app that will go much more detailed than this. But here's a couple a screenshot of our new mobile app, training mobile app. Uh, so this will make training easier, reduce the paper burden, make certificates easier and faster, more compliant, and open trading to more people. So from the training app, you'll be able to add your certificates, um, view your existing certificates, and see some notifications. Um, so for the training app roadmap, um, phase one will be the initial training app with the ability to add certificates. It'll also have Azure AD authentication. So it'll use the same authentication that we added to 415. So it'll also support MFA. Um, That'll also include the new iTrack uh, mobile API and alerts. And then phase two is when we'll add exams, the ability to take exams, um, training tasks, and training documents, and so you can recertify your training certificates. And then later on in the year, we'll come up with our new Forms app, which will feature the same UI and it'll also have Azure AD login. So that'll replace our existing um, iTrack app. So that one will have, be able to handle corrective actions, um, form entry, like your inspections, your risk assessments, your incidents, et cetera. And then that'll also be around the same time frame we come, come out with a mobile management portal. Then our third app will be our, our standalone procedure and competency app, which will have procedures and competency. And then Later in the year, early next year, we hope to uh, look at SharePoint integration for document management. So the old app will continue to work uh, for, for the foreseeable future. We don't really have an end date for that. Also, as part of the new apps, we have a new um, API endpoints. So th these new endpoints will make it a lot easier if you want to integrate our mobile backend with your own application. So if you want, so if you already have a system and you just want to integrate or you want to build your own app, you'll be able to use the API endpoint. Um, so any questions? Yeah, there was one on the chat there. Ashley Gibbs. Uh, yeah, I see that. So Teams tabs affected by upgrades to iTrack. Or is the functionality all in iTrack? For the most part, it's all in iTrack. So 415 allows you to include the Teams tabs properly. Anything before 415 won't really work. But 415 and up, you'll be able to add um, Teams tabs. And at 416, we'll add um, the ability to add forms and um, 
and activity uh, form tasks or actions. But for the most part, any future upgrades shouldn't break break any of the integration you have today. Tian, it's Trevor here. Um, just one thing I might say to uh, to others that are in attendance, and, and you know, if you want to speak now, or if you want to send me an email, or send Malik an email, I'd really be interested in uh, in the larger group's um, thoughts on some of the things that we're thinking about relative to the API. That's probably brand new to everyone. It's going to take a little bit of you know time to 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 see where that 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 may fit. Um, but we, we, what we're trying to do, um, just to give you a little philosophy behind that, is really say that you know if any application needs safety in your organization um, or with other product vendors or other things, they literally can use iTrack as an extension to that, or you can internally. So um, you know, I'd really be interested in, in, in people's thoughts on that. It's again, it's going to take some time to percolate, so you may or may not have thoughts right now. But that's part of the. Uh, the goal that we have with that is that, you know, the the business logic, the workflows, all the compliance, all the rules that you put in for safety are there. And just if you need data come from another place, um, you can you can uh, use that API to uh, to build that in. So uh, uh, certainly reach out to us if you have more comments. Hey, this is Gio here. I have a question for Melik, if that's all right. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question as to how Microsoft played a role in helping us really kind of not only change our thinking regarding what we could do with Teams, but just in the broader perspective of iTrack becoming a product that really extends into other aspects of the Microsoft ecosystem. I was just wondering if you had any commentary around that because it is a fairly significant leap from you know even a year ago uh, microsoft has always been kind of the back end for itrack and a lot of the business logic lives as code in dynamics in 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 there um so with with the newer versions of dynamics they're updating you know made two major releases each year so there's a lot of new features we can leverage as part of iTrack because of that. And then with them continually upgrading everything, updating, making updates, and certain things like the AI, rather than us having a team of like 100 developers developing this, we just use what Microsoft is building. And we use their API and use use all the good, all the new things that they're innovating and adding. You, 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 Jeff, you ask a really good question here, and I, I, I just chime in on that a little bit myself. Um, you know that, you know, we really think of Microsoft as just a broad toolbox, and that toolbox gets more power tools, more effective tools all the time. Um, and yeah, you're right. For us as a team, I think it was a bit challenging for us to kind of go, hey, you know, we don't have to build it all. We can actually leverage what they have. Um, but I will say, you know, for people on the call to, you know, this is a competitive differentiation in our product um, and our strategy, a very significant competitive differentiation. There, are, as you guys many will know, there, there's probably 100 HSE systems you can buy out there. You can spend five bucks on one or you can send $500,000 on one. And, you know, really what we're aiming to do is be in the mid-tier enterprise space, supporting kind of SMB up into enterprise customers, but using this tool set, knowing that HSE isn't an island. HSE is not a tool, and we know, and I know quite a bit about our competitors, some of them think that HSE is where the wor world starts and ends, and, and no disrespect to HSE at all, it's just HSE systems are part of a larger ecosystem of, of applications in a company. Um, so we we try and tap into that, and that's really, you know, a fundamental um, underlying philosophy saying we're going to use all these building blocks, we're going to get new building blocks, you know, but, you know, we get the question sometimes, is, oh, how, is it easy to import data into iTrack? It's like, well, we got connectors from Dynamics. We have hundreds of connectors. We as a company didn't need to build those. We leveraged our, our, our partner in doing that. And uh, as you heard from Cecilia, that's part of what they want us to do. They want us to be the industry experts. They want us to go deep to make use of that whole suite of tools. And certainly, you know, the development team has that depth 
um, that really uh, that really does allow us to uh, to leverage it. So, uh, Jeff, good good question. I'm glad you brought it up. I hope that's useful for the people on the call because uh, it's certainly something that we've thought carefully about. And if you look across the world, you're going to find one company that's building a health and safety system on Power Platform, and that's us. We are differenti differentiated based on that. It's a very competitive space that we can defend because we've spent literally, you know, the last eight or nine years building on that. So nobody's going to catch us real quick, um, but we're going to keep going as fast as we can to bring that power of that, you know, power platform, pardon the, uh, you know, the repeat there, but that's, that's what we're after. So. Paul, I've got a, I've got a question for someone that's around the API. Um, we've got um, a, a um, I guess a, a concern the business around uh, making sure our contractors are compliant. I'm just thinking with the API, um, is there potential there to link in our vendor process um, where we identify contractors that are vendors, vendors that are contractors and link that into somehow an external form um, that we can link in our contractor procedure into. So we have a I guess a, a, a check in place there that our vendors that are contractors have gone through um, the safety compliance process before they go on site. Um, Malik, maybe you can speak to that. Um, so there, you're using a form today to kind of track all that information, right? Yeah, we're using a we're using a form, and then we've also got um, a. Um, ERP system, which is AX, which has been upgraded to AXD365 this year. And I'm just thinking if there is a way we could, um, with the API, identify where if vendors come into the system and link that into um, iTrack somehow. Uh, well, there's, I guess, two ways you could do that. By using an external form, you can have that embedded in inside your uh, your website or inside whatever process your contractors are using. And then you, you can have them enter in the form that way. They can also, once it's been submitted, they can also view the form again later if you give them access to to do it without having to be actual users inside uh, Dynamics. Mm. Okay. And somehow could we uh, use an, the, the API from D365 to identify vendors that are loaded into the system that require that form to be completed? Um, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. There, there's too. a few different ways you could do it. Great, thanks. You're welcome.